Hey guys, Brad Bodnerchuk back for a brand new episode here on the Brad Bodnerchuk podcast and we are doing our very last of the three-part series where I break down relationships. I want to say again, thank you guys so much for your feedback in the first two podcasts. It actually is because of the feedback and the responses that I've gotten that I decided to launch a live webinar with my sister, Tasha Bodnerchuk. Shameless plug, November 17th, seats are available, space is, limit, space is limited, pardon me. So grab your seat uh, through my website, bradbodnerchuk.com uh, slash live events. But the reason that I decided to host this with my sister is because there's been, like I said, so much great feedback in regards to what I've been sharing. And that feedback has inspired me to share even more, hence the webinar, and hence me coming on today to give you guys a little bit of a longer podcast as I wanted to cover off some other pieces that really could have been chopped up into different podcasts, but I wanted to put it in here because uh, because I think it's really val valuable for these pieces to all kind of be mentioned in the same bucket. Before I continue, I want you guys also to understand that when I say relationships, I don't just mean intimate relationships. I mean relationships with your brothers or sisters or cousins, nieces, nephews, uh, aunts, uncles, parents, especially like all of the stuff that I'm mentioning is really applicable just to relationships in general. But what I find myself speaking to more naturally is obviously the intimate relationships. And that one for me is the more prominent one in my life. While I obviously do have relationships that I'm building with my children, relationship with my parents, and my friends, the one that really uh, inspires me the most, challenges me the most and causes me the most time of reflection is my intimate relationship with my partner, Lindsay. And I want to say that it's been so great for me to be able to use this platform to share with you all some of my thoughts and ideas and, and some of the tools that I've been using to work on and work through our relationship as we grow. And what I wanted to touch base on today is, is, Again, a few topics, but the first one is something that really got me to where I am today. And what I mean by that is got me to a, a position where I am now in a relationship that fulfills me. I have two incredible, healthy children. And that wasn't my reality five, six years ago. My reality was very, very different. I was in a relationship that I wasn't fully being... I wasn't fully engaged in or wasn't really serving me, but I was blind to what was going on. And the theory I want to introduce today is actually a theory that I heard years ago, but I guess I didn't really fully understand it when I first heard it. And now I love to apply it to things like relationships. And the theory is stop loss. And stop loss can also be applied to, uh, say, stocks in the financial market. So a stop loss, the language means essentially, if you're my stockbroker, and you and I are deciding we're going to buy a certain stock, call it um, an Apple stock, or we're buying Amazon stock, or one of the popular ones these days. I actually have no idea. We don't do stocks, but you get the idea. So we're going to buy stocks. You and I are going to buy stocks together. And you say, okay, Brad, the stock is trading at uh, $50 per, per stock. What is your stop loss? Meaning when that stock gets to a certain level, in regards to it losing money, when are you out? When are you selling that stock and moving on? And I like to apply stop loss to actually relationships. And again, intimate or otherwise, but we all have to identify with things like boundaries, what our stop loss is in our relationships. And what that doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that we just bail on relationships, but what it does mean is that maybe it's time when you hit a stop loss in a relationship that you have a conversation, you set new boundaries. So what a stop loss is again, is when relationship gets to a point where you feel like, not, not so much you feel like, you have given 100% and it still isn't giving back, it isn't yielding what you want it to yield, then maybe it is time for you to stop your losses and either have a tough conversation, which we'll talk about shortly, or move on. And I came to a stop loss in my previous relationship, in my marriage. Again, you guys have heard me say it, in a relationship for 10 years, married for seven, and it wasn't a healthy space, but I hit a stop loss where I thought, you know what, I've given so much to this and I don't feel like it's actually fulfilling me. It's not, it's not making me whole as a person. So I decided to end the relationship. 
And as difficult as that was, I now know tangibly what a stop loss is and what it feels like. And it's actually a really healthy muscle to exercise. And like I said, it's not that you need to bail on relationships left, right, and center, but it's about being very aware. So if you bought your stock at 50, what is your stop loss? Is it 35? Is it 40? Is it five? Identify what that is. Identify when you say, okay, I've put enough into this that I'm no longer going to lose. And it could mean something as simple as you just, you stop investing as much as your time or you stop doing the things that you were doing. But again, it doesn't mean that you completely bail on the relationship and bail can be a very tough word, but I think you get what I'm saying. Where my scenario, my choice was to end the relationship because it wasn't serving myself or my ex-wife and I wanted to stop the loss. I needed to. And now because of that decision, because of that tough decision, I have the reality that I have today. And I said this the other day to Lindsay, like none of this would exist. The kids, the home, the the podcast, my bit, like none of it would exist if I just stayed in that space and allowed for that stock to completely lose value. And that leads me to the next point, which is tough conversations. I cannot tell you how difficult it was to have that conversation uh, five years ago and tell the person who then was my best friend that I no longer wanted to be in that relationship with them. That was extremely challenging, but my God, was it the most incredible conversation for me to have because what it did, it set me down the path of where I truly wanted to be. And since then, I've had a whole new appreciation for tough conversations. So I encourage you guys as it regards, as it, uh, in regards to relationships, part of me, like tough conversations just need to be had. And I'm challenged by those that avoid tough conversations, but I also am empathetic as well to that. Not everyone is like me. Not everyone wants to, you know, dive right in, but I understand fundamentally that through those conversations is so much growth. It's like through fear is beauty. Like we have to get over that fear of that discomfort, that feeling in our gut. And we do that with our relationships. It just allows for so much incredible growth, both for us as an individual and the relationship as well. And if a tough conversation means, hey, let's go our separate ways, that's actually not, not super easy, but man, is it healthy? And if the conversation is simple as like, hey, I don't feel respected in this relationship, like at least your voice is being heard. And it isn't easy to say, but you will respect yourself way more and your partner will respect you way more. And that's it as well is, is how much do you respect yourself? And how much can you be in a relationship, any relationship, even a professional relationship, if you're not truly showing up for you and being real and having those conversations and saying like, hey, this isn't, this isn't okay for me. And there are so many excuses that we make to avoid tough conversations. But I encourage you guys, find it within yourselves to exercise that feeling in your belly, to rid yourself of the stories of what could happen, what the outcome could be, and just dive into it. It is one of those things that, I mean, we've all done it. I know you guys have all done tough conversations, but we need to continue to do it. It's one of those things that it really is one of the most freeing things. And I said freeing uh, in this first, the first podcast of the series, when I sat there and, and fully understood what love was in that moment, how freeing that was. And now I'm chasing that feeling. I'm chasing that high of, man, like it, I just feel so light and I feel so in line and I feel so true. And for me, the truth is something that I really, really want and crave in my life. And that truth for me, a lot of times comes through tough conversation. So I encourage you guys, if you want to have a stronger relationship, a relationship that can withstand storms and arguments and branches falling off your proverbial tree or whatever it may be, you have to, you have to guys, you have to have tough conversations, whether it be with your parents, your intimate partner, your children, uh, your boss at work, whatever it is, tough conversations. Not only will you respect yourself more, but everyone else around you that you're having those conversations with will respect you way more as well. I guarantee it. Next is kind of in line with that. It's just communication. 
There has to be healthy communication in a relationship. What does healthy communication mean? For me, it means consistent communication. And consistency is something that we see across the board in life and in business. If you want to be successful and call success whatever you want, but if you want to be successful and have growth, there needs to be something done consistently. And consistent communication for me is an absolute must. So whether it is a weekly check-in or a bi-weekly check-in, we talked last week about, you know, how does your partner want to be loved? That's something that should be communicated on the regular. And there needs to be those open avenues of like, hey, can I come to you and talk about whatever and be vulnerable? And again, that goes back to the tough conversation. So I, I ask of you right now to kind of have a self-reflection. Do you have open communication in your relationships? Again, whether it be intimate or, you know, uh, not intimate with your buddies or your parents or like, you know, your platonic relationships. Do you have the uh, space to have open dialogue? If you don't, that is a major issue and that will come back to haunt you. So find a way to create open communication. And really, if, if you want, if you want open communication, be the one that leads the leads the way, be the one that says like, Hey, uh, I'm here and I need to talk. And Hopefully, if the person respects you and cares about you and loves you, they'll sit down and they'll listen. And if they don't, go back to point one, stop loss. If this is something you keep doing and keep investing in and that stock is losing value, then maybe it's time to move on. But do your best. Almost insist on open lines of communication. You need them. We all need them. It is imperative as humans that we can communicate and let each other know where we're at, where we're going, and how we're feeling. So communicate. The last one I want to touch on today uh, is choice. It is so easy, I find, nowadays to be a victim in the world we live in. And I'll be honest, over the past few days, I've struggled a bit and I found myself playing the victim our son is teething. He's not sleeping that great. Things are happening with business and relationships that aren't awesome. And it's so easy for me to want to jump in the bed and throw my head under the covers and just kind of hide and be a victim. But that isn't what I'm meant to be doing. And I know that. And for none of us, not for any of us, that isn't what we're meant to be doing. We're meant to be growing. We're meant to be facing those situations head on and, and growing. That's what our ancestors did and that's what we're here to do is we're here to grow and we're here to evolve but one part of the whole victim mentality is the lack of understanding that everything that's happening right now in your life especially your relationships is a choice and it's your choice so whether you're in a relationship that isn't great or you're in a job that isn't great or your relationship with your dad or your mom or your brother or your sister isn't ideal you have to understand this is, that is an active choice that you are making. And the moment we start to uh, pass judgment or blame others or again, become a victim is the moment where we're headed down a really deep, dark tunnel that isn't healthy for anybody. So all the good things in your life and all the bad things in your life, please understand fundamentally, it is a choice that you're making. And sure, there are different things that go on for each of us that are unique, whether it be medical issues, mental issues, um, situational issues, and I'm sensitive to that. But each of us that wakes up every single day, and we have the gift of opening our eyes, we have the gift of breathing air, you know, hearing sounds, touching, feeling, doing all those things. You have a choice. You, you fully have a choice of how you want your life to look. And the moment we think opposite, we become victims. And I don't want that for you guys. So in your relationships, the ones that you're in right now, all of them, platonic and intimate, please understand if they're awesome, that's because of choices that you made. And if they are brutal, that's because of choices that you made. And you're choosing every day to stay in them. And that is something, again, that I touched on in the first podcast is relationships are a choice every single day, meaning your partner doesn't have to choose you and you don't have to choose your partner. And the moment we start sleeping on that, meaning taking it for taking it for granted, that's when we start to slip. That's when we start to 
you know, forget about doing those things that are important for our relationship, important, important for our partner. Understanding that it is an active choice every single day, me choosing you and you choosing me. Picture that person at the party. You want to be, they want to be the ones, the one that you leave with. You want to be the one at the party that they leave with. It is an active choice every single day. Relationships are hard. They're incredibly hard. They take a ton of work. And part of that work is making sure that your partner chooses you. So how are you showing up for your partner? And are you someone they want to choose? And don't take for granted that they're going to choose you either. Like this is something we need to understand fundamentally that every single day it is an active choice in relationships, you're either choosing your partner or you're choosing to be in the relationship. And please do not blame any situation on why you're in or not in a relationship. It is completely up to you and you have the power to control your own life. Speaking of your own life, I guess my second last point is this for a relationship to succeed you need to love yourself. And I know that because I went through that. When I ended my marriage and began the journey of finding out what I really wanted in my life and going after what I really wanted in my life, I couldn't actually get anywhere until I fully loved myself. And I look back at that time and I know unequivocally that I did. I invested so much time and energy and money into myself from coaching, and mentors and I showed myself so much love and it was at that point only at that point that I was able to achieve the love that I wanted in my life and that only came from me loving me so if you guys want successful relationships again intimate or otherwise you have to love and value yourself if you don't it's going to show up and it's going to show up in a very toxic way and it's going to show up repetitively so find ways, find ways to fall in love with yourself and your relationships around you will thrive. So in closing, let's go over the last few points in this relationship series that I think are so crucial. Stop loss, knowing when you're at your point where you're, just, you're not willing to put anything else in the relationship and it's time for you to make an adjustment. Tough conversations, they have to be had, guys. We need to be having those every day. If you can't have one, that would be amazing. Communication, making sure we have open lines of communication in all of our relationships is imperative for growth. Choice, understanding it is an active choice. You choosing your partner, your partner choosing you, and you choosing to be in the relationship that you're in. And everything else that goes on in your life is a choice that you've made. And then lastly, you need to love yourself. Put yourself first. Everything else will fall into place. A little bit of selfishness goes a long way because then you're able to serve others. And serving others is why we are here. That's it for me, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this series. It means the world to me. It means the world to me that you guys follow this podcast as well. Reminder, November 17th, live webinar with myself and my sister, Tasha Bodnerchuk. Seats are limited. Get yours at bradbodnerchuk.com slash live events. We are giving half of the proceeds from the webinar to feed Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia, pardon me, which is a local charity here that puts food into mouths, people that can't afford it. We're coming into Christmas time pretty soon, which is crazy to say. It would be amazing if we could send them a big check to help those in need. That's it for me. You know what to do until next time, guys. Be ridiculously good to each other. Work incredibly hard. And we'll see you next week for a brand new episode. Peace.